My name is Mark Clark and I'm an Extension Specialist in the Soil and Water Science Department. I'm also a member of the Program for Resource Efficient Community at the University of Florida. One of the major challenges facing the planet and humans is a lack of fresh water and a degradation of our water quality. In urban areas, much of that degradation comes from stormwater runoff. Before development in the natural landscape like this forested area, during a rain event, trees intercept a proportion of that rainfall and allow it to evaporate right back to the atmosphere. But much of that rainfall comes down to the soil surface and once it hits the soil, a lot of it infiltrates and it's very important to recharge the surficial aquifer as well as the deep aquifer, which is our drinking water. But eventually, if it's a long enough storm event or an intense enough storm event, the soils become saturated and the water becomes ponded on the surface. But again, in these natural areas, there's lots of depressions which that stores that water, pools that water, and allows it to infiltrate over time. And not until we've saturated the soils and filled up all that depressional um, storage does water begin to run off the surface. But even then, it's running into leaves and twigs and roots, and it's a very slow runoff process. And all of that is important because that's how the water would run off these natural landscapes. But as we start to develop the landscape, that all changes. When we develop the landscape, the quantity and the quality of the water that runs off the landscape changes dramatically. The canopy that we used to have in that natural forest, it's pretty much gone and replaced by either smaller trees or more ground cover like grass or turf. Um, and that means less of that water is intercepted and more of it actually reaches the ground. But that water that does reach the ground now might fall on impervious surfaces like sidewalks or rooftops or parking lots or roadways. Or if it does fall on the soil, sometimes that soil gets so compacted during the development process or even as we walk around or mow our lawns, that water is less likely to infiltrate down into the soil, which means more of that is running off. The depressional storage that used to be in that natural landscape is oftentimes either eliminated or when it is available, that depression might be drained. Well, that means more water, instead of infiltrating down into the surficial aquifer or deep into our drinking water aquifer, is being conveyed off-site. And prior to the 1980s, most of that water would have been just directed into streams or lakes or rivers or maybe a sinkhole and just essentially allowed to flow off the landscape unmitigated. Um, Since the 1980s, there's been a permitting process, whereas the, the landscape's developed, there's a pre versus post runoff characterization that's determined, and that water is now put into stormwater retention or detention basins to help to reduce the potential for flooding, as well as to help treat the water. But research recently has found that even those mitigation actions of a stormwater retention or detention basin isn't enough to mitigate for the either quality impacts or changes in quality. And that's brought us to a whole different way to think about developing the landscape, something called low impact development. And the idea is to change this more conventional style of development, which was changing the hydrology and causing that water to be conveyed somewhere else, and trying to better mimic that natural landscape again re-establish the canopy, or better yet, don't cut it down to begin with. Allow for the water to still infiltrate into the soil, either by eliminating the impervious surface or changing it to a pervious surface. Re-establishing the depressions in the landscape to hold the water and allow that to infiltrate. Or enhancing a stormwater basin, which will now allow for the biological processes to occur. In this series, we're gonna talk about several different types of low impact development. A really nice example here on the University of Florida campus is near the Southwest Recreation Center. And what they've done there is actually change the architectural design to allow for the roof runoff to move down through some structural designs that then feed into a bioswale or a bioretention area. And that area, instead of a raised flower bed, is actually a depressed area that captures the water, but it's also a flower garden. So in this series, we're gonna show you examples of pervious materials that will allow for that water to infiltrate back into the soil. Ways to design the landscape to put those depressions back in, capture the water, allow it to infiltrate, and make it part of your landscape. We're going to show how a whole neighborhood was designed around this concept of low impact development to minimize the disturbance to begin with, fit the homes into the site, and select landscaping that minimizes the needs for fertilizers, pesticides, and water. We're also going to talk about an enhanced stormwater retention basin that turns a stormwater basin that's required under the permit into more of a community amenity to improve water quality, wildlife habitat, and overall species diversity.